My name is Joe Jemsek and I'm part of the Physicians Training Program for Highlands, uh, an organization to which I've had, long to, uh, had the pleasure to be uh, involved with for several years. And uh, during the time that I've been with them, um, early on I got involved with teaching physicians on site and I think uh, it's been a very good thing for the program and certainly uh, something that we should continue to seek to do and try to improve upon, try to expand upon. We treat exclusively patients with Lyme disease or Lyme Borreliosis complex, as I call it, or perhaps Borreliosis complex. These are generally um, very complex, very ill people who've been on a doctor trail, seen lots of docs, spent lots of money, very frustrated, very sick, disengaged, marginalized in a lot of cases. And um, it's a challenge, and I love it. The good news is we get a big chunk of people better and we look at that as our building block and it's like the base is kind of big and it shifts a little bit but it, but it's most of the shifting is done up here right now. Yeah. So it's not like we're starting over with each each new challenge, each new patient. We, we've been at this long enough, we definitely see patterns. We, we've got hundreds of patients and who've responded to you know a different programs, uh, not necessarily just antimicrobials but uh, neurotropics or neuroleptics, psychotropics sleep management, uh, nutritional management, uh, all of that and, and just you know understanding that the patient has to uh, have their basic uh, health needs met, their essential life functions if you will and um, I think one of the things that we do that break it down very simply for anyone that cares to listen is we look at it at three stages. First stage is preparation, that's understanding the patient, gathering the data, building on everything they have had done before and not discarding it but trying to integrate it into what's ha what's happening here uh, because there's a lot of studies going on. They have a lot of times things haven't been very successful but there's still a lot of data. So we don't take a naive patient and necessarily we see patients that have been around the block on the doctor trail. We use that data and we can rule in or rule out other things along the way and that helps immensely. Then we get our patients, we continue and get our patients prepared so that um, the fundamental aspects of sleep and sleep restoration, the fundamental aspects of control of pain are met without making the patient feel dopey. The patient is, is, is um, stabilized from a psychiatric point of view. If they're working with a good psychiatrist, we're more than happy. We encourage collaboration there. The next part of the program is a treatment phase which will vary but in which we have certain uh, roadmaps that we follow and there's a very good reason for, for why we go in a, a logical sequence and then when that's done and I think the big frontier in the future is brain rehabilitation how do you get that brain better that's the third part because now you've excoriated or you, you've expunged the uh, infections now you have a brain and central nervous system uh, peripheral nervous system other tissues that can finally heal how do you get that patient to heal what sort of supplements do you get what sort of um, ancillary services do you provide such as hyperbaric, uh, how important um, is um, brain training, brain exercise, of course it's important but what's the best combination, what's the most efficient way? That's going to be the next big frontier I think because the first two parts we feel like we have under fairly good control. Now that's not to say we don't have a lot to learn especially in the area of biofilm but and we do have a lot to learn of course but many of our patients if not the vast majority if 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 we can spend the time with them and there, there is a lot of time, we'll get better. Then the question is how do you keep them better, what criteria have you used to say they're better, and um, how do you keep them from relapsing. So what we're trying to do is build such a strong immune control of such a, a diminished infection load that it's virtually impossible for them to get sick again with this disease. We have to teach thousands of physicians how to deal with Borreliosis complex. We just do. It's going to be a total departure from the compartmentalization that we have in medicine today, which is, you know, isolate these specialties. One talks to the other, but they don't talk very well. They don't understand each other. And the poor patient with a complex problem never gets solved because uh, there's not that capacity. So we have to go back to the roots of medicine, which is to know the whole patient, to listen to the patient, for Christ's sake, listen to the patient, and become good at a lot of things. Not everybody can do that, but you have to try. You have to be good at a lot of stuff. 
You know, you have to be good at stuff that you weren't necessarily trained in primarily. And you can do it if you go to work and learn every day from your patient. My, my, my experience has been that when a person is motivated comes and they have so many questions and they sit down with us and they go through the day with us and they're just blown away. They're just blown away. Uh, and it's, it's, it's so much fun to teach, teach them or instruct them and learn from them actually. Everybody has something to teach you of course. But they're just blown away. They did their jaws dropped and they say, oh man, I never realized the complexity and the, some of the ingenuity that goes on here and some of the science that's used and the breadth of medicine that's required to do a good job with these complex patients in all disciplines of medicine or almost all disciplines of medicine. Oh yeah, I think in future, I think we're going to have limologists. <laughs> you know, I think, Lyme, I, let's say something silly like limology. I mean, I, we're going to have 50,000 Lyme doctors in uh, wait, maybe one and a half, two generations. Complex set of infections, because it's going to turn the whole concept of chronic illness on its ear, virtually 180 degrees, instead of a, uh, and, and by the way, this takes away the whole issue of environmental toxicity, about which I'm not an expert. But obviously that plays a plays a role, uh, and I can't really speak to that. <clears throat> but I can speak to the whole set of infections that we see in our patients, um, suppressing the immune system, uh, facilitating the expression of other diseases, of which there are quite a few, um, and pretty much in the worst cases, uh, robbing them of their ability to interact with their environment. You're making them a shell of what they were. Um, Whereas in modern medicine today, where we have too much chronic illness to start with, I think every other person's got a chronic illness in our country. Um, you know, the, what's been in vogue since they invented steroids, which is only 40 or 50 years ago, by the way, is that, oh, we all have autoimmune diseases. And, you know, that's, we need to suppress that immune system and we need to inject it with this and that and the other. I'll agree that there are, is an autoimmune component to Berlioz's complex, but I think it's transient. I've seen it. In patients who've been firmly diagnosed with SLE, autoimmune hepatitis, rheumatoid arthritis, where those markers will melt away with treatment, with support, other forms of support. Not every single time, but they melt away, and it makes a big impression. And that person is very happy to be off steroids at that point. So <clears throat> right now we have a patch and pay system where we just, you know, shut up the immune system, manage the patient in a chronic way with these very expensive uh, immune modulators, if you will, in that circumstance. And the patient never really has a chance to um, fully recover. Their immune system is never going to recover as long as they're getting slammed with these things. What, what we want to do is we want to put that immune system back in charge to the extent possible because it's been beat up, battered, dis disorganized, dysfunctional for a very long time, making very bad decisions <laughs> about things that come into the body. And we want to, to organize that immune system, strengthen it, and get it to focus so that it can, has control over uh, you know, a set of pathogens that cause disease in the first place, and which was, um, we haven't evolved to the point where we can control these diseases, by the way. I mean, you know, so we're not, we're not back in the, uh, you know, the survival of the strongest or fittest anymore, where the people <laughs> that get sick just die off and we you know, genetically uh, weed out those who are more um, inclined to become chronically ill. We don't do that. So I can tell you, we haven't evolved to the point to control these illnesses. These are crafty sets of organisms, and we're, we haven't evolved. They attack us where it hurts the most. They attack us in our nervous system. Uh, the inspiration of, uh, of doing this comes from patients, patients who recover, but also from the knowledge that one gains uh, once you um, are able to put links together and solve problems and you see patterns and once these patterns tend to repeat themselves it's really pretty amazing and pretty inspiring it makes you want to do more it you, makes you want to be better and so I think that my colleagues and I here at the clinic we try to learn something every day or every week and I think we do and we do it by corresponding with each, with each other listening to the patients in particular and making these links and trying to involve as many other colleagues as we can, people that are smart and uh, have their own ideas about things, that we're open to just about anything, but we still stay in uh, a rather constrained 
uh, clinical area, if you will. In other words, we don't just, um, you know, take a dance with the next pretty girl, if you will, or, or whatever the parody would be. We we gradually try new things. We try things one at a time, generally. If we're not doing well, we try to strip things back and say, okay, where we go wrong? And when we get somebody better, we say, what did we do right? What worked there? And then we try to think about other ways that that has happened in the past. So when someone's well, okay, what we do? What was right? What was good? And uh, it's, it's very, very challenging. It's very inspiring, though, when you get it right.